friends uh, now today we will be learning something about prostaglandins now it's a mind map uh, session which will just give you overview on use of prostaglandins and also we'll talk something about the physiology areas and so on but it will be a summary and i won't be going into details of each and every prostaglandin uh, because it's uh, more related to specific therapies uh, and diseases where we want to learn about those in detail uh, now uh, as you can see we have the membrane phospholipids now the pointer is pointing to that and which can be disrupted because of a trauma a trauma can be a physical chemical or any other disease process which disrupts the membranes of the cell and uh, with the help of phospholipids a enzyme the membrane phospholipids get converted to arachidonic acid now this arachidonic acid has two pathways to get converted to the next substances the one pathway is the cyclooxygenase pathway and now cyclooxygenase pathway or the cox pathway is uh, the one which converts this arachidonic acid to prostaglandins g and h uh, now this cox as an enzyme is uh, present in the body in two isoforms one and two the one is the most uh, physiological isoform now that's basically important for maintenance of renal function, maintenance of gastric mucosal functions and so on. The next pathway is the lipooxygenase pathway, the ones uh, which is labeled here in orange and one where the pointer is there which converts this arachidonic acid to leukotrienes. Leukotrienes are slow uh, reacting substances of anaphylaxis that brings about a lot of capillary permeability, a lot of oozing of fluids, chemotaxis of leukocytes and they have to something to do with again leukocytes so the name leukotrienes and so on. So we are not here again to, uh, to look into the functions of leukotrienes but basically they are the ones that help in uh, uh, a lot of processes like allergies, anaphylaxis, bronchial asthma and we have a lot of uh, anti-leukotrine drugs which are available which are used uh, in bronchial asthma uh, for allergies and so on. Anyway, uh, turning again to prostaglandins, the cyclooxygenase pathway or the COX pathway as labeled here converts arachidonic acid to prostaglandins. Prostaglandins uh, G and H were highly unstable and are again converted into the final forms that is the prostaglandins E, D and F. I just mentioned it E2, T2 and F2 alpha but there would be a few other subtypes of prostaglandins which are also secreted. Uh, now uh, as far as uses of prostaglandins are concerned, prostaglandins uh, as a rule will cause vasodilatation of the smaller vessels but they have the ability to cause vasoconstriction of uh, the main uh, or the major vessels in the body. As far as uterus is concerned, they can bring about contractions of the uterus uh, at term as well as at a normal uterus. Now there will be differences in which what individual prostaglandin does but then again to summarize uh, just remember that they can cause uterine contraction but at the same time they can cause the service to uh, soften out and that's the reason that you want to use this for induction of labor as well as for abortions and so uh, uh, other uses related to obstetrics uh, now they will also inhibit gastric secretion at the same time increase mucus production they can also increase mucosal blood supply to the stomach and that's why they become very much of help in management of ulcers especially non steroidal anti-inflammatory drug induced ulcers uh, now they will also cause bronchoconstriction and a few of them will cause bronchodilatation but anyway just want to remember that uh, at this point that they can cause bronchoconstriction they are pyrogenic and that's their basic cns toxicity so they can bring about fever and that's why we use uh, inhibitors of cox which inhibit prostaglandin synthesis your non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs for treatment of pyrexia drugs like uh, paracetamol or the banned drug like nimesulide which are cox inhibitors and prostaglandin inhibitors because of cox inhibition they will cause anterior pituitary hormones to get released as well as the renal action will be more of diuresis and renin is also released after giving prostaglandins they will decrease intraocular tension especially the uh, prostaglandins f2 alpha and that's the reason that you want to use uh, analogs of this prostaglandin for treatment of glaucoma especially wide angle glaucoma as i informed informed to you they are pyrogenic 
uh, in nature they can bring about fever as far as intestines are concerned if you give prostaglandins then uh, they will cause increase in peristalsis and can result in a lot of secretion of uh, uh, intestinal juices as well as will cause watery diarrhea uh, now prostaglandins usually act on um, their own G protein coupled receptors and there are uh, five main classes of prostaglandin receptors D, F, I, T and E. As far as uses of prostaglandins are concerned, prostaglandins are important for induction of abortions, uh, especially uh, the varieties which are used are the PGE variety as well as the F2 variety. We also want to use uh, prostaglandins for postpartum hemorrhage to control bleeding via contractions of uterus, induction of labor because it causes cervical softening as I mentioned to you as well as will cause uterus to contract, uh, can induce labor. Now there are specific regimens when I'm just talking of abortions, PPH, induction of labor. I'm not going to do all those details uh, right now because it's not under the preview of this lecture. Uh, but anyway, they are used for induction of uh, labor. They are also used uh, for peptic ulcer disease as I informed you. They inhibit uh, gastric secretion, increase mucosa, blood supply. So they are especially used for N uh, NACID induced ulceration, especially the uh, PGE variety of prostaglandin analogs. They are also used for erectile dysfunctions in individuals. Prostaglandins are used again for PDA maintenance, that is patent ductus arteriosus maintenance, especially in babies who have uh, a lot of congenital heart disease. You want to maintain the patent ductus arteriosus till the surgery is done. Uh, in fact, uh, when I talked about non steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, I did talk about endobethacin, which is given to uh, inhibit prostaglandin synthesis in children having PDA patency remaining after their birth but here is the reverse way sometimes you want it to remain open uh, so that uh, the surgeries can be done very easily and the patient can live up to the surgery uh, so you want to use them for those conditions so these are few uses of prostaglandins as far as ADRs of prostaglandins are concerned GIT disturbances in the form of uh, diarrhea abdominal cramps uterus gets contracted so uterine cramps flushing because of vasodilatation fever because they are pyrogenic hypotension again because of vasodilatation using out of fluid and so on can cause hypotension uh, tachycardia because few of the prostaglandins are directly iodotropic on to the heart and because of which also chest pain can arise in individuals uh, after giving prostaglandins. Uh, prostaglandins are available as tablet form, vaginal PCD or a gel, intramniotic injections, IM and IV injections. Of course, I didn't mention IV here, but even IM and IV injections, prostaglandins are available. Uh, now, this is about prostaglandins, but just to touch on few other things. Uh, prostaglandins which, um, which are unstable in nature can get converted to thromboxin with the help of thromboxin synthesis enzyme and this thromboxin is a potent platelet aggravator and a vasoconstrictor and when you talk about low dose aspirin you are exactly talking about inhibition of thromboxins uh, which bring about antiplatelet action of aspirin that's very much of help when you talk about uh, treatment of uh, myocardial infarction, angina, stroke or any other CVS related and thrombosis related issues. We also need to find out about synthesis of prostacyclines uh, which are PGI uh, as I noted here which are vasodilatory agents, uh, anti-platelet aggregated drugs also, uh, age substances also. They are used in treatment of pulmonary hypertension, peripheral vascular disease that is PVD. Uh, and they are also helpful in uh, cardiac surgeries and hemodialysis to maintain uh, the thinness of the blood, the fluidity of the blood as well as, uh, as their vasodilators to maintain the patency of the vessels. Now that's in general about prostaglandins uh, and related substances which arise from arachidonic acid uh, that is thromboxins and prostacyclines. Now, if that is all about this, I would like to end this session by giving you uh, 
a lot of drugs under prostaglandins the dinoprostone which is prostaglandin e uh, is basically a vaginal tab or gel it's used for induction of labor or midterm abortions dinoprost is intramniotic injections is midterm abortions carboprost chemiprost which are again injections or baseries which are used for cervical priming in early pregnancy or for use for abortions or control of EPH. Alprostadil is, is used for erectile dysfunction or for maintenance of PDA. Mesoprostol uh, again is used for peptic ulcers basically but also can be used for abortions. Epoprostanol is for pulmonary hypertension. Latanoprostol is again F2 variant of prostaglandins which is used for glaucoma and uh, ileoprost again would be uh, given uh, for uh, abortions and so on. So that usually is the case when it comes to clinical practice with prostaglandins. Again, uh, what you need to remember is that prostaglandins are used for so many conditions Again, the specific thing about prostaglandin, the specific variant of prostaglandin, uh, do you want to remember it or not, it's up to you. But for me, uh, remembering uh, it as a summary goes a long way rather than remembering it as a specific variant which becomes uh, too much of confusion uh, later on when it comes to practice. Now that's all from me for now. Uh, I hope you'll have a nice day. Uh, thank you. Bye. Do subscribe.